Astosceles is as unique as he is difficult. He loves to swing a sword at you and stab you repeatedly for lots of melee damage. His biggest draw? You can't use items in battle against him. He'll strike them out of your hand. In this video, I will be sharing with you everything I know about Astosceles so you can never lose a fight to him ever again. Astosceles is a mini-boss and the first that you encounter in Chapter 4. All of his attacks are direct strikes with his sword, whether he is swinging it at you or stabbing you with it. And after attacking you, he may put up his guard, increasing his defense by 2. To counter this, moves that flip over foes like Kabu's basic attack will faint him and force his guard down. V's Hurricane Toss also in fact ignores all defense, but it's not going to be able to keep his guard down. Be aware that any attack that doesn't flip after his guard is dropped will prompt him to raise his guard again. So Leaf or V will have to either relay to Kabu to do more damage, or use a move to benefit the trio in the fight. As for Astosteles' attacks, he can swing his sword at you for 3 damage or 4 in hard mode. Its timing is tricky, as he winds his arm up before swinging it at you. But keep watching the video, I'll tell you how to telegraph it later. His other attack involves stabbing you twice for 2 damage for hit, 3 on hard mode. Whether he does 2 or 3 stabs, it will always do the same amount of damage. Once his HP falls below 65% of his maximum, he will gain Hustle status and start attacking twice per turn. Not only that, but Astosceles will gain some new tricks for his old moves. He gains a combo move where he can swing his sword at you and then stab you with it. He can also just choose to stab you thrice instead of just twice. When he will though is completely random. But he still can just choose to stab you without swinging his sword first. To tell the difference between him stabbing and swinging at you, pay attention to his face before he walks up to you. If a glimmer appears in his eye, he's going to stab you, otherwise he's swinging. Beware of him stabbing you with his sword after swinging it at you though. Once again, a glimmer will appear in his eye. You may not be able to react to it in time, so be ready to press the guard button around the time the glimmer would happen just to be on the safe side. Now that you know your foe, let's learn your options to defend against him. As a boss with very straightforward attacks but no items allowed, your only real options involve your skills and available medals to equip. Easily your best resources for medals involve defense boosting medals like back support and reflection. The former can be found in the west side of Golden Hills, while a reflection can be acquired through either giving Magic Ice, Shell Whiteman, or Madeline's Leaf Umbrella to a Remy in Defiant Root. Of those three items, your only option before Astosceles is the Shell Whiteman which can be found in the Honey Factory second floor, behind the crates guarded by the security turret. This item also respawns every time you exit and re-enter the Honey Factory, so don't worry about ever being locked out of this medal for this quest. With both of these medals, you're prepared for normal mode. Taunting with Kabu in the back, and then doing nothing after relaying either V or Leaf's turn to him, will give him enough defense to block any and all damage from Astosceles on normal difficulty. Hard mode, however, you need a little more defense for this swing. Super blocky will do the trick, but so can Defense Exchange. The only problem with the latter is that it would take reaching round 30 of the Cave of Trials, which you may or may not be willing to do. However, Prayer is a perfectly usable alternative that restores the 2 HP of damage that Kabu would take if you at least tried to standard block everything. And even if you don't know how to find a tangy berry to complete Arya's quest, you can either watch my video on Golden Seedling Hunting, or complete round 10 of the Cave of Trials to get one for free. When all else fails though, just super blocking can be enough if you're brave. In fact, giving Kabu two Super Block Plus medals alone is enough to block all the damage the Stoshleys can do to you if you're consistent, and it comes with its own advantages as we'll soon see with other medals like Spiky Bod. Let's talk about some other ways to fight this thug. Let me make this perfectly clear. If you haven't already, beat Mother Chomper and get Chompy. Seriously, unless you're waiting for me to make a guide on how to bust Mother Chomper, you have no reason not to have done this yet. Since she will also always attack last, making sure that Astosceles' guard is down with Kabu's basic attack will help you maximize your damage as much as possible, especially on Hardest where you'll need the super block to not get overwhelmed even with defensive metals. You not being allowed to use items means the TP you go into the battle with will be all the TP you have unless you're using either of the two meditation medals or you have the hard mode reward TP core from again Mother Chopper. And being able to replenish taunt will be hugely important for the strategy to be sustainable, in addition to the two defensive medals I already mentioned earlier. This is also a rare case of a fight where I think Tardigrade Shield is actually more useful than Bubble Shield Light if you're aiming to do more damage more quickly thanks to Super Block Plus and its synergy with Spiky Bod. For every Super Block that you land, you do 2 damage and recoil from a single Super Block Plus medal, 
and three if both are equipped to Kabu, and you can't super block with Bubble Shield protecting you. This could be a method used to make the second phase end as quickly as possible since Astopheles will begin attacking much more often after he gains hustle status, and potentially dealing 12 or even 24 damage in a single turn cannot be understated. It's also worth mentioning that even though Astopheles won't let you use items in battle, V's secret stash and sharing stash moves are unaffected. So she offers one of two methods you can use to restore HP. The other method involves prayer. Refer to this video to learn how to find it where we are in the game. Overall, you need a considerable amount of MP to be able to equip all these medals, but they're not all necessary. The essentials all have to do with giving yourself at least enough defense where standard blocks will protect you from all damage. An interesting thing you learned about Astosilis, by the way, is that he is affected by exhaustion whenever he attacks you on a second turn, so his attacks will do one less damage on his second attack. Whether this mechanic is active for him, however, depends on having the hard mode metal equipped. Not the difficulty being active, the game only checks that you had the metal on at all. So yes, this means that being a squad of Peebus does make this fight more difficult. This boss can only be made so much less difficult thanks to items not being allowed, but at least on hard mode, you have the tools necessary to weather out his damage output if you're unable to super block. Just keep a cool head and try to play patiently, you'll be fine. On hardest or tough bucks however, blocking properly is critical. You'll also want ample TP both to heal with V and redirect as much damage as possible. So stick it to him and show him who's boss around these parts. There's a new sheriff in town and it's you. Now if there's a boss that you are struggling with and you need some advice for how to deal with them more effectively, just check out my playlist or comment down below which boss you want me to cover next time. In this series we call Boss Raid, formerly Boss Busters, the goal is ultimately to make you better players at whatever game you're struggling at. Subscribe down below for more Buff Fables content, and I'll see you next time.